I am Violeta, I'm a Digital Adoption Manager for Life Events in EMEA, and today I'm joined by Adi, who will be your presenter for this security uh, session. Keep in mind that everything we cover today is for educational reasons. So if you are planning to using the services further, you may connect with somebody from the Oracle account team. Also, if you decide to watch any of our recordings available on YouTube Oracle Learning Channel, keep in mind that uh, our products are enhanced regularly, so you might find some differences within the menu. Also, our session today is all demo, so if you have an Oracle Cloud account, just log in and take this journey together with Adi. That would be all from my side. Adi, I would like, I would like to pass over to you now. Uh, okay, so hi everybody. Welcome to today's session. Um, today, I'm gonna try to show you some of the use cases that we've seen to multiple customer because as you know, Oracle, it is a multi-cloud, uh, uh, yeah, cloud provider yeah we encourage our customers to go and implement new technologies but uh, when implementing that new te technologies we do not do not want to uh, interrupt the normal workflows that are inside the current uh, enterprises so that's why uh, we created the these integrations yeah we already have it uh, yeah in OCI for a long time so today i'm going to prove you how easy it is to do this type of configurations uh, in OCI so I will share my screen now. Okay. Let's see if you're able to see it. Okay. It is okay. You are able to see it. All good, Adi. Okay. Yes. It's, so I'm in here. I have two OCI accounts. Yeah. At this point, and I'm going to use them, both of them. First of it, this OCI account that I'm using, it is for demos and it is an older account that is using uh, IDCS as the uh, for federation, okay? So how I can go to IDCS and enable Azure AD, let's say as the identity provider is by clicking on the menu. Yeah, we, we called hamburger menu a long time ago. I still remember it and I'm still using it from time to time. And you click it on the menu, you click on identity and security and you go to the federation menu, okay? So in the federation menu, you're gonna see that you have Oracle Identity Cloud Service in here already federated. And when you're gonna click into it, it will load the menu again. And after that, you're gonna have the link to your identity cloud service uh, you, uh, menu. In here, again, we have a menu button, another hamburger menu that we have in there. And from there, I need to click on it. I need to click on security and I need to click to identity providers. So in here is going to be, I'm going to move, let's say, between IDCS and move between uh, Asia and move between Google at the end of the presentation. So our, our first step that we're going to need to do at this point is to click add the SAML IDP. Okay. So because I know how this is done and I need what are the things that I need to use later in Azure. So what I'm going to do at this point before adding the, uh, the SAML IDP, I'm going to click on the settings part. In here, I'm going to click on default settings. And in here, I have this access signing certificate. It is already enabled. So this means that I can go, I can copy the identity provider page in here. I'm going to put it and I'm going to write fed, yeah, slash fed, slash v1, slash metadata. And after I'm going to press that, yeah, I'm going to see the metadata for my identity provider. It is important to take this metadata because uh, you want to make it as simple as, well, as possible. Yeah, when you federate your identity provider. So let me name IDCS my metadata. I'm going to save it. Okay, it was already there, but I will replace it to have it very fresh in here. And now I will go to my uh, Azure environment. I'm already logged in, in here. In here, you're gonna have an Azure Active Directory. This is a personal account, so that's why I do not have all the functions that an enterprise Azure has. But in here, after I logged in into Azure and I'm in the Active Azure Active Directory, on the left, you have Enterprise Applications, okay? So you're gonna click on Enterprise Applications and you're gonna create a new application in here so when you're gonna click create a new application, you're gonna see the main uh, identity cloud providers yeah, that are supported by Azure by directly. And I'm gonna click on the Oracle. 
And in the Oracle option, AD Gallery, I'm going to see multiple offerings. But what is important for me is this one, yeah, the third one, and Oracle Cloud Identity Console, Oracle Corporation. And you're going to see these two uh, icons in here. What this first icon means that is allowing you to do single sign on, and the second one is allowing you to do um, user provisioning. Okay, so that's why I'm using this. You can use any others of it, there is no issue. Yeah, but usually I go with this one, or you can also create a custom one, but I prefer to go with uh, the existing one because it's much simpler, much faster. So uh, I will put it uh, OCI. I, I will give it a name in here OCI DS2, and I'll click create. Okay, so now we have to wait a few seconds for Azure AD application to be created in the back end. When it's going to create it, it's going to tell me that this was done. And we're going to move to the next step in there. And that next step will be to configure the single sign on. Okay, so application was added in here. So I'm on the overview page. And in here, you have this set up single sign on, or on the left, you have single sign on menu. So you choose one of these two, you click on it. And now you have the option yet yeah, to select the SAML uh, identity provider. So we Adi, did that. Yes. Sorry for uh, interrupting you. Uh, can you please increase a bit your screen size? People asking oh. for it. Okay. They cannot yes. actually yes. see it well. More, more. More, okay. I think it's better now. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a okay. lot. Thanks you. Thank you, Adi. Okay, so I have added, uh, yeah, I click on the single sign on part. Now I'm on the, uh, yeah, the configured part. As you can see in here, you have require, require, then have the option to do it manually. Because I have exported the metadata from my identity provider, what I can do, I can go back to the downloads. I have the metadata in here. I'm adding to the identity provider, okay? And, uh, Okay, I think I already have it in here. So that's why it's giving me an error. Okay, so what I need to do, it is 720 at the end. I need to go back on my AD enterprise application that we have in here and remove it. If not, current, current, maybe this one. This is with live demos. You miss something from time to time. <laughs> okay. So I do CS in here maybe. Okay, not this one. It, it, you are only allowed to have only one IDCS. Yeah, so with one IDCS means that when you're going to add to, you try to add it again for another application, yeah, it will not allow you. Okay, so you see in here I have it. What I'm going to do from here, I can delete it. Okay, so application is on deleting. And now let me find the one that we just created. If not, we're going to do it again. Okay, it's this one. Okay, go back again, click on single sign on, click on summon, and I'll try to upload the metadata again. Okay, I this is metadata, and I will press add. Okay, so this time it is much better. What I am missing in here, yeah, it is uh, the sign on URL, yeah, because uh, it's not available by default uh, on all of it. So what I can do, I can go to this page. I'll copy this part. Adrian, could I interrupt you? Just a quick question, and I'm yes. sure it's going to bubble up. You know that you got that issue because we tested it. <laughs> so sorry about yeah. that. But anyway, um, if you do get a problem like that, you're better off just doing what you did, like go right back to the start and starting from beginning, rather than to try and pick your way through the, the maze. Well, what's your recommendation? Well, if you're going to have the same link in Azure, you're going to reuse the same application that you have in there. Okay, that's my full recommendation. <laughs> it, it, that means somebody else already configured it for you. So that means it is in that uh, in your OCI tenancy. So do not try to do it again, create another application or delete the other one because you might interrupt your business. Oh, okay. Good point. Yeah. Okay, cool. You need to go and talk with the person yeah, who has access to both uh, Azure yeah, and to IDCS. Yeah, because he needs to know what he has done in there. And 
give you additional rights on uh, the OCA tenancy to do it uh, and see it maybe in there. Cool. Thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's the the recommendation. Okay, so now yeah, what I have done. The sign-on URL is the one that is uh, is used by the single sign-on. Yeah, the, serv the, pro the service provider initiate a single sign-on console, and it is the IDCS page itself. And at the end, you need to add slash UI slash UI slash my console. Okay, so that's it. We have done this. Everything else was pre-populated from the metadata file. We save it. Okay, and after we save it in here. We're gonna see that on the left, on this page in here, you have this SAMON signing certificate and you have a part that is called Federation Metadata XML. You download this one, again, we have another XML because we don't like to write things, we like to do it as automated as possible. So I downloaded the metadata from Azure AD at this point. I'm going back to IDCS now, I'm going to my security menu, I'm going to my identity providers. And in here, I click add salmon IDP. I will name it Azure AD. Yeah. I can upload an Azure AD uh, image if I want, but I'm not going to do it this time. Yeah. This is other thing. I'll press next. Okay. And I have the metadata that was exported from uh, Azure. So what I exported is the one in here. Okay. I'll press next again, and now I can go and I can leave these ones, yeah, as they are in here, or I can change it based on how my Azure AD it is configured. By default, yeah, let's say in my environment, I'm using email address as my name ID format, so that's why I'm going to put it in here. But based on how your environment is configured, yeah, you can go and change it in here. Yeah, you can put primary email address, you can uh, use email addresses and so on. So in this case, I'm going to leave it in here. If it's not going to work, yeah, I'm going to do some troubleshooting. I'm going to show you in the assertion uh, answer that I'm getting from Azure what I did wrong. Yeah, what is not configured properly. Yeah, so usually you're going to see it in logs, everything that is happening. So these ones, we don't need it at this point because everything was configured on that part. I'm going to press next. And now I have the option to test the login and see if I'm properly redirected to Azure AD. And I'm going to receive an error. Okay. So I'm redirected to Azure AD, so that is okay. But in here, your administration has configured the application to block user unless they're specifically granted, okay? So that means I do not allow this user yeah, to log in in here. So what I can do in here, I can log users and groups and I'd have no user or no group assigned to my Azure application, okay? So this is an additional security feature that Azure administrators are embedded in, in their, uh, let's say, identity management solution. So you need to go. We recommend to go and add groups. Okay. When you do that, you add a group. If something is changing, yeah, without that group, uh, yeah, you'll not be able to uh, to use it. Okay. So you can add a user in here. You can add multiple users because I'm using. Um, the free, the one that uh, is paid, yeah, it's not the enterprise uh, Azure AD, which it costs more money. Yeah, uh, I'm only able to add users, yeah, to to the so the solutions that I have in here. So that is the thing, and uh, that's it. Yeah, we can add multiple users, we can add multiple email addresses, and so on. We can assign them, and based on all of these that we have in here, next time, what I'm gonna do, yeah, is to go back to IDCS. I will finish it, yeah. I will activate this uh, Azure AD, okay. So that means that I should be able to use single sign-on from now on. Now I'm gonna go back to users, and I need also need to have one of those users created in IDCS, okay. So if the user does not exist in IDCS and does not exist in Azure AD. You're gonna get another error. Yeah, it's gonna say that the user does not access an IDCS, so that means that you are not allowed to log into the required application. In this case, OCI. In here, you have multiple options. Yeah, you can leave it this way. So, if you look at the federated menu, if it's put it on now, that means that you can also use a local IDCS user, and at the same time, you can use a federated account. In my case, I will change it to federated account. Yeah. So this user, when I'm gonna to try to log in, it only accept Azure AD credentials. Okay, 
So now I have added this uh, Azure AD user. So it is the same one that uh, I have added into here the application. So that is okay. So it is doing what I want to do for this user. Now I'll go back in here and next step that I have to do, I need to add that uh, Active Directory Azure AD as uh, an ident in the, my identity uh, provider policy. So I'll click edit in here. Yeah, so these are the default ones that I have by default and I also select this one. So I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna sign out. Okay, and now after I sign out from here, I'll also sign out from here yeah, to clear the cookies and everything. And I will try to log in again, but this time I'm gonna use the user that was already in there, yeah. Okay, so this is my tenancy. Yeah, I only have only IDCS, the identity provider, but when I'm gonna click on continue, I'm redirected to the IDCS login page. And in here I have Azure AD. When I'm gonna click Azure AD, yeah, you can ask me to use what is the profile that I want to use in here. So let me use this user. Okay, it's going in here. And in here, let's see if I remember the password. No, I do not remember the password, but that's why I have a key pass. I'm gonna take the password from there. I'm gonna put my password in here and I'll press sign in. Okay, it's asking me to change the password. Let me change the password. Okay, I'm gonna put a new password in here. I'll click sign in. Okay. And I'm logged in inside OCI because that user was part of the OCI group with my user that was created in Azure AD. Okay, so you've seen how easy it is to use uh, IDCS as a service provider and Azure AD as the identity provider. Okay, so this was done in the old IDCS console and so on. As you can see, my user is in no other domain. He's only able to log in. So he will not have access to the federation pages and so on. Okay, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, let me look in there if there are questions or something like that. Uh, Tom, Violeta, please stop me. Tell me the No, we're, we're okay so far. We're okay All so good. Far. Okay. All good. Okay, okay. So then I will continue with the next option Yeah, that we have. As you know, in OCI, we have another um, option, yeah, that appeared uh, a few months ago, almost one year ago. And instead of using IDCS directly, we simplify it and we add another, another uh, let's say, licensing model to make our customer life much easier. Okay, so all new customers, instead of using IDCS as a federated uh, environment, we created identity domains, okay? So with identity domains, you log in into an OCI tenancy, but you're not gonna see any more the um, uh, IDCS or the federation menu and so on, because everything it is already federated by default. Also another thing, yeah, before, if you wanted to create different IDCS instances, you had to go in the old PSM console, create a new IDCS, create uh, the users, receiving email, change the licensing, a little bit more complicated than it is in this new environment. So in this new environment, okay, you have the option to create a new domain, you select what is the licensing type that you want, you specify who is the administrator, you create domain and the administrator will receive the email. In my case, I'm using uh, a test uh, IDCS, yeah, because in the backend it's still IDCS, but the workflow, it is much simpler right now. So after I'm using this one, yeah, I'm going into, I need to go back to Azure, yeah. So in here, first step that we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the uh, Federation, yeah. I need the metadata for the IDCS that is in the backend. So if I want to go and get the metadata in here, I need to go to the settings, Okay, so in that settings part in here, I have trusted partner certificates. Yeah, if I want to import them and so on, or I can go and let me find it. 
in the session management part, I think, or where was it? One second. Uh, or I can do something else. Let me go to directly to the identity provider. Okay, I'm going to copy this one. Yeah, as I did on the other part. So in here, I'm going to slash fed slash v1 slash metadata and because it is enabled yeah i have access to the metadata for the identity domain directly i'll click save it again save page as okay metadata with a name to know it when i'm going to create it in azure okay i'm going back to the domains in here and in here, I will move the page a little bit on the left. I'll go back to Azure. And in Azure, because I do not want to have the same issue as I had before when I create a new application and it's going to tell me that, look, that application, it is already created in Azure. I'll go to this identity domain. I'll click on single sign-on and check if it is ending in for bit two and is the same yeah so this is the same identity provider same idcs in the back end so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove it but before removing it let me copy this part yeah for the sign on url okay go back to overview enterprise application identity domains and now let me remove it okay mm -hmm. Delete. Okay, I'm deleting the application. I'm going to create a new application. I'm going to select Oracle again. The third one, yeah, that also has provisioning. Okay, press create. Wait a few seconds to have it. Wait a few more seconds. Okay, so we have it. Now we click again on single sign-on. We click on SAML and we upload the metadata again. And we're gonna put it the one that we exported earlier, metadata identity domain. We add it. Almost everything is pre-populated and I'm gonna use this again, yeah? Instead of copying this one from here and put slash you ask slash you on my console. I think I have a space in front of it. Yeah, exactly. So everything it is okay. I will save it. Wait for it. Okay, configuration saved. Press X, X, X. We don't want to save it uh, to test it yet. Yeah, because it's not pre configured. Federation metadata again. This file, we download it now. Now I will move back to my identity domain part. Now I need to click on the security. On the security, I click on the identity providers menu. And in here I have add IDP. I will name it Azure AD. I will leave no icon this time. And I will import the identity provider. Uh, let me go back to downloads and identity provider. It should be this identity domain. Yeah. Okay. I'll press next. Map attributes. I will leave with email address. Yeah, the name ID format. If you're looking at what I'm doing, you're going to see it is 90% similar with the actions that I have done in IDCS. Okay. The only thing that changed it is the console format. 
So that is really important. I'll click create IDP. So the IDP was created in the backend. I'll press next. And now, yeah, we can go and uh, test the login if I want. But first, let me activate it. I want to check if the user that I wanted to use it is already created in there. Okay, I'll click on identity. I will go to the domains. I'll go to test IDCS domain. I'll click on users. And I have this user in here. So that's good. But I'm missing something. The user is not created in, uh, is not added as an application inside the um, Azure AD. So in here, I need to click on users and groups, add user and group, select the user again. Okay, I'll add my user. I will assign it. Okay, and now I can go back to the other application in the backend. And now I can test it. Yeah, it's not okay because I haven't assigned it to IDP policy. Okay, so we have the identity provider created. We have the identity policy, IDP policy, and we need to also add Azure AD on this one. Okay, so at this point, I have my username and password, and I'll get add Azure AD. I will save it. Okay, so I'm in here. Let me sign out from here. Sign out now. Okay, so in here, I'm able to select this one. Yeah, best IDCS. Yes. And as you can see, Azure AD is appearing in here. Let me select the username that exists. Let me copy the password. Okay. And now I'm connected with my Azure AD account. So this was something that we did very fast and very simple. So in around 30 minutes, we're able to federate to Azure AD accounts with IDCS and with uh, the new identity domains. Okay. Now let's move forward. I'll move back to my uh, OCI environment with an IDCS. I will close my Azure AD environment and we're going to move to the next uh, option. How to do federation using um, Google Cloud. Yeah, so I'm going to use um, an identity provider uh, that was provided by Google. Okay, let me log in with my admin account. Let me enable MFA. Okay, so the process is the same. You go to the hamburger menu. You click identity and security and you go to the federation menu this time. Okay. Now on the federation menu. Yeah, we click Oracle Identity Cloud Service. Okay. We go to ADCS and we're going to wait a little bit more on this page because I need to go to Google. To go to Google, I need to go to Google Cloud, the yeah, console.cloud.oracle.com. And in here, if you have already, already a project created, you go to that project. And in here, yeah, if you go Google Cloud, you click on the menu that they have in here. And you need to click on API and services this time. Okay. So on API and services, yeah, you need to click on uh, the credential page. And in here on the credential page, what we need to do is to create an OAuth to zero credential ID. Okay, so you can do it from zero. Yeah, so let's click create credentials. We're going to create uh, an Oracle client ID. Okay, so in here from the application type, yeah, you need to specify what you want to use. In our case, that is going to be a web application. Okay, so we're going to create it as a web application. Uh, you can go add authorizing JavaScript, depends on what are the use cases in the backend. 
but in my cases, I'm going to make it very, very simple. Uh, what I can do in here, I can, I, and I need to add it, is the authorized redirect URI. Okay, so in that page, I will need to go back in here. I'm going to copy the IDCS uh, page URL. And in here, okay, let me put, I think it's going to work without 24443, but let me be sure. And in here, we need to point it to OAT2. We had the application IDCS, V1, okay, social, okay, and I'm going to allow the callback. Yeah, so this is the authorized URL. Yeah, so I'm going to allow IDCS to do a callback uh, in here. Now I'll click create. I think I'm left, I have left it with uh, the default name. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, so what I received in here, it's a client ID and a client secret. I'm going to take these ones. I'll go back to IDCS. Now I'll click on the hamburger menu. I'm going to click on the security and I'm going to click on the identity providers. This time I want to add a social IDP. Yeah, I press add social IDP. I will select Google as the social IDP. Google, give it a name, maybe put something in the description. And now I'm going to add the data that I receive it from here. Okay. If you want to use account linking, yeah, you can use, yeah, but they can, call, let's say, if they're using uh, Google, it will appear in the, your application. If they want to use that one, uh, yeah, you can select it directly from that. It's not very important part, yeah, but it's making life easier or not. And you can activate it. Yeah, so I have the social IDP, put it in there, it is activated. If I'm going to click into it, Okay, so if I'm going to edit in here, yeah, I have account linking enable and also enable registration. So with this one, uh, if you want to make an account in a certain application, yeah, or a user needs to make an account in your application and you are allowing it, then you can leave it enable registration. If not, you can disable it. Yeah, in my case, I don't want to have it in there. So yeah, I will leave it, disable it. Okay, so now everything it is created. The last steps that I need to do is to go to identity provider policies. I will edit this one too. Again, I'll go to identity provider rules. I'll get to the default identity provider rules. And near the other identity provider that I have in here, I will add also Google. Okay, so now I have this. In here, if I'm looking, yeah, I have a user. Yeah, I also have a user that which is my personal email. And now, if I'm going to log out from here, okay, so I'll go back to identity cloud service. Google will appear in here. It will show me the login page. It will not allow me to do anything at this point. I will go again. Okay, first time it needs to do something cloud.oracle.com let's see I'm signing out from here and also let me look at this is the application enabled okay. yeah looks like okay everything looks okay in here Okay, let's go back to cloud.oracle.com. Oh. Okay, Oracle Identity Cloud Service, and let's see again. It's allowing me or not. There is a problem with your account. Let's see what is the problem with my account on IBCS. The link in the case in there.
So always with live demo, the, there are appearing issues that you are not expecting, but we can go and see why not is not working. And I think I know what is the issue. It is as always with the cookies. Okay, so let me create another page. Inside the window. Okay, come on. Okay, let me use another browser, that one. It has some issues. Okay, so let's try again on Google on this one. Okay, so this time is working. If something is not working and you are sure that you did the proper configuration all the time, first thing that you can do is clear the cookies, go to incognito mode, yeah, second option, or uh, let's say close the, the browser and uh, restart it again. Adrian, on, on that point, I, sorry, just I noticed uh, we've done a couple of security sessions and incognito mode has come up uh by most of the people demoing i guess that's the recommendation if you're testing this inc inc incognito mode or, what, or whatever it's called on whatever browser you're using that's probably the recommendation to use is it yes exactly so the, the idea is this uh what i'm using on my environment yeah is incognito mode uh, because it's much faster but also i have a cookie cleaner and yeah, that is doing cookies cleaning for that page but I also need to uh, to clear the cookies for Google page, yeah, for Google uh, for connection to Google Cloud and also for OCI. So the easiest way will be yeah to go incognito. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a lot of moving parts, uh, incognito is the recommendation. Yeah, but it is also usually happens when you're using multiple identity providers because uh, you're gonna make the browser crazy. They have multiple cookies, they do not know what to use in there, and so on. Yeah, so. That's right. So Google, yeah, I close it. It's incognito. So in here, I need to specify an account. Hopefully, I remember my password. I was, I was just going to say, the other one is uh, make sure you keep all your passwords handy. I guess that's probably uh, tip number two, isn't it? Yeah, and tip number three, always enable multi-factor authentication. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing to be sincere. Yeah, because it's going to help you on other security yeah. options and so on. So as you can see, we did this with uh, this browser too. Yeah, we have it in here. So what we can still have, I think we have 13 minutes and I think we have the time to do it right now. Let's go to the identity domain and show you how simple it's also to do it in here too. So I will sign out from here now. Okay, let me... Okay, close. environment it's time I want more rights yeah then the, the accounts that I'm using from outside Oracle so the, those ones are just blank accounts no rights into it I'm redirected to our page let me prepare MFA again Okay, so I'm back in the console, identity and security. I'll go to the domains that we already have it in there. I'll go test the CSA virtual. And in here, I need to go to security, identity providers, add IDP, add social IDP. Oh, put Google this time. 
And now I need to go and take the client ID and client secret. Okay, let's see you. Client ID. Okay, client secret. Okay. Add IDP. Yeah. Okay, so we have Google in here. Let's activate the IDP. Okay, I'll go to IDP policies. I will add it to the IDP rule. And I will add also Google in here. I will save the changes. Let me sign out. Okay, so this time I test IDCS. I'm redirected. I'm seeing that the Google is in here. Okay. Yeah. It's not working because I didn't change something in the IDCS URL. So I can do it on the fly. Okay, so this is the URL that I can also edit. In theory, we should wait five minutes. Hopefully, it's going to be much faster. And if I'm going to click again on this Google, no, it's not working. It's somewhere in the back end. Okay, so the, the five minutes didn't went in there, but uh, access is online. Yeah, gives me an error that the content was not yeah, corrected by Google yet. So that's why you have that five uh, minutes in there. Yeah, when they're saying they're going to do things. So you, you have seen how easy it is to do this. If you have questions, you have the Slack channel where you can send the questions or you have the email, Violetta send it to you at the beginning. And uh, yeah, we are here to help you as much as possible on all the features that you want to do and so on. So let me delete my traces on all of this. Yeah, so at this point, nothing would gonna work with these identity providers. Okay. Any other questions that you have? Uh, Adi, there is a question on uh, on the Q and A. So okay. somebody is asking <clears throat> when Oracle migrates the IDCS to OCI domains, the setup already done on IDCS will be fully migrated. Uh, in theory, yes. Ninety-five percent on the UK, so everything should be uh, migrated as it is. Okay. But uh, the idea is this, identity domains brings additional features and the names, uh, convention, everything that is in there should remain the same. In some cases, maybe the certificates expire at that point or they need to expire soon and they Oracle realize that it's much safer yet to renew the certificate during the migration. Yeah, so these are some small cases that uh, can help happen. But 90% uh, yeah, it should... Uh, yeah, be done automatically. And oh. another one, is there a feature to auto-synchronize users and groups from Azure AD to OCI domains? 
Yes, this is done using, uh, I think, provisioning option. When you create the application in um, um, Azure AD, okay, you have, one second, let me share again my screen. It's much easier to show that. Yeah, please do. Okay, so when you are in the enterprise application that let's say you created, we created earlier, uh, let me put it, create it on 20, any of it. If you go in here on the left, you have a provisioning option. Okay, so with the provisioning option, if you created that, yeah, you should be able to uh, automatically provision uh, the user from uh, IDC from Azure AD to IDCS. Okay, so that is the provisioning part. And on the provisioning part, you should in my environment is not showing yet because uh, I do not have it. Yeah, I'm enabled. Yeah, it's, a, it's the free one. But in here to do the provisioning for uh, Oracle, if we go to this domain, you'll be able to see it. How easy it is to do it. Also, you have to OCI. Oracle Cloud OCI OCI. Cloud integration. It was somewhere or see it is our how claims are done and all of that, but It should have been stored somewhere. All application. Okay, provisioning mode. Yeah, you need to change the provisioning mode. Yeah, to automatic. Under single sign-on, you have the provisioning menu and you should see something like this. You can put automatically or so on. And you have a tenant uh, URL. You specify the IDCS. And the secret token in here, it is created in IDCS as uh, you, you have a, a client ID, a secret ID. You put it uh, in a base 64 converter. You put the two points between this client ID and uh, client secret. You you take that one and you're gonna put it in here. They're explaining a little bit here down yeah, how it is done. So this is what you need to do. Uh, let me put it in chat and I will stop right now, Violeta, and I'll let you to continue with. Thanks a lot for all your support. And if you have any other questions, please put them on Slack and uh, um, we will be more than happy to, to answer them. Um, so I see another question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Danny, for, for joining the session. All right, so if no further questions, I would uh, consider this meeting to an end. I would like to thank you all for joining the call and to say, uh, to say a big thank you for Ad, to Adi for presenting. And of course, we are waiting you on um, upcoming uh, cloud coaching sessions. Thank you and have a great day.